the death of a messiah and can it be this is a surprise this is a, a serious question and for us the death of the messiah may sound common knowledge may sound really possible but not so for those who received Jesus Christ as the Messiah of Israel, as the Messiah of their day. It was such a shocker that a Messiah should die. So we now celebrate uh, as we ask ourselves whether we also can be interested in this kind of Messiah. And I love the hymn, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? It brings out surprise, a different kind of surprise, a surprise about how the Messiah would die for me, for you. That surprise is what we're going to be looking at in that hymn by Charles Wesley. First, let us pray. Thank you, Almighty God, that we have an opportunity to reflect on your word and to be encouraged and to be drawn to you as we re read and, and confess and as we draw closer through the words that have been written for us by the biblical writers and other writers who have also expressed their response to you. And I pray that you will indeed speak to us and revive us and draw us to yourself more and more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, those are two surprises that we need to look at, but I will concentrate on the second one. The first surprise it is clearly evident when we read Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 to 22. You clearly see Israelites who don't expect a Messiah ever to die. They know that he should live. You know, even in our local cultures, we, we talk about the no death of the Messiah. We don't want the Messiah to die. That's why we say, long live the king. Long live the king. We don't want the king to die. And so if it's a super king, he should not even talk about death. When we read Matthew chapter 16, verse 21 to 22, we find uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of sentiments. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders the chief priests and the teachers of the law and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life peter took him aside and began to rebuke him never lord he said this shall never happen to you before we blame peter before we rebuke peter this sentiment was not only in Peter. It was among all those who longed for the Messiah. They knew that the Messiah should never die. Long live the Messiah. Long live the King. It would be such a heartbreak, such a disappointment, such a, a, a scandal for a Messiah to die. Especially die young like Jesus at 33. This was unheard of. For a Messiah, a king that should save people from their oppressors. A king that should save people from their oppressions. But Jesus not only said it, but did it. And in this season, in a season of the passion of the Christ and towards Easter celebrations, we recall that journey, the journey of Jesus Christ to his very gruesome death, very gruesome crucifixion and death. That was a great surprise. And it caused people to be confounded, to be confused, to wonder, what on earth is this? What kind of a Messiah is this? Maybe you also wonder. But there is a second surprise. That that death was to save you and to save me. And this cannot be you cannot narrate this story enough. You cannot celebrate this enough. And now we want to borrow the testimony of this man called Charles Wesley, who wrote this hymn as a celebration of his own conversion. I love this hymn. It tells the story of many of us as Christians. It is worship 
in the beginning and seeks to describe the kind of Messiah we have embraced, the kind of Savior that we have embraced, and then talks about my story, Charles' story, the story of deep darkness and in sin and then being converted by the light of Jesus Christ and coming up to no condemnation, a celebration that will outlast us. A celebration that will continue even up to life in eternity. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Did he die for me who caused his pain? Did he, pass, did he die for me who pursued him to death? That must have been amazing love. How can it be that you, my God, should die for me? In verse number two, we see the strange design. Who can understand it? Even angels struggle. It is a mystery all. The immortal dies. Ah! Who can explore this strange design? The firstborn seraph, that angel, he tries to explore this in vain. He tries to sound out the depths of love divine, but he cannot. Let's just settle with this. It's all mercy. Let the earth adore and let angel minds inquire no more. It is deep stuff. It's a strange design and yet it worked. Now in verse 3, listen to how strange it gets. Jesus left his father's throne above. That throne was so free, so infinite. And that translated into grace that was so free and so infinite. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus emptied himself of everything except love. And that love drove him to the cross to bleed for Adam's helpless race. Don't you think about Adam, the first man. Adam means man. Jesus Christ went to the cross and bled for your helpless rest, for my helpless rest. And what's our response? It's just worship to say, it's all mercy. It's immense and it's free. For, oh my God, it found out me. It found you out. Celebrate this. And don't take it for granted, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, so free, so immense and that is what we celebrate. Oh my God, it found out even me. Now Charles Wesley had a personal story to this. He, he knew how wretched his life was. He knew how deep in sin and darkness he was. That's why he exclaimed, and said, Oh my God, it found out even me. Now some of you have stories that are more intricate than, than that of Charles. Some of us have those stories, but the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ can find you out, can bring you in. And this is the story of his conversion as he writes in verse number 4 of this hymn. My imprisoned spirit lay for long, first bound in sin and nature's night. But your eye, O oh God, diffused a quickening ray. I walk the dungeon flamed with light. The guy was in a dungeon. It's like he was in a dungeon. His soul was like in a dungeon. And now he celebrates and says, My chains fell off. My heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed you, Lord Jesus. That is the breakout of a celebration that is concluded in verse number 5, celebrating the hope and life forever. No condemnation. Now I dread no condemnation. Jesus and all in him is mine. I am alive in him. He is my living head. I am clothed in his divine righteousness. I approach the throne of God boldly, that eternal throne, and I claim the crown through Jesus Christ, who is my own. Hallelujah. I pray that that testimony you too can give it but friends 
we need to give thanks. And give thanks by giving our lives to this Savior, Jesus Christ. He was a dying Messiah, but death did not put a stop to his salvific work, his salvation work. It continues today. And he reaches you and he reaches me. Glory to God in the highest. And give him your life today. Give him your life continually. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you gave in your great love your son Jesus Christ to save us and he paid with his own blood. Lord, give us the grace to embrace that love, to embrace that grace and continually worship you with all that we are, with all our lives forever and ever until we come to that eternal kingdom which we look forward to and which you have prepared for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. May God bless you richly.